Please be ready for dictation of an exercise number 18 from Progressive Magazine of October 2022. It is a legal passage. Five seconds to go. Start. The plaintiffs submit that the present plea relates to the denial and non-recognition of the beneficial interest of defendant number two of the shares held by the defendant numbers three, four, five, six, and seven in defendant number one. The cause of action arose on 31-12-2016 when the draft consolidated financial statement of defendant number 11 records deconsolidation of its accounts with those of defendant number 2 for the reason that there is absence of confirmation of beneficial ownership from the legally registered shareholders of the entities. Thus, on 31-12-2016, it became manifested that the recordal of declaration of beneficial interest of the defendant number two would no longer be caused to be made by those in control of defendant number two and its affairs, namely defendant numbers three, four, and seven, and which hostile action led to not only the denial of the recording of beneficial interest of defendant number two, but also to deconsolidation with the retrospective effect of its accounts with defendant number 11. With the deconsolidation of accounts, it became clear that a hostile action denying the beneficial interest of defendant number two stood taken by defendant numbers three, four, and seven. The cause of action further arose on 7-6-2017 when defendant number one refused to acknowledge the beneficial interest in the suit shares. The cause of action further arose when defendant number one through defendant number 10 on 27-6-2017 once again refused to acknowledge the beneficial interest in the suit shares. The cause of action further arose on 12-11-2017 and 24-11-2017 when newspaper articles being in public knowledge suggested that the equity of the defendant number one is being sold to private equity investors through a bidding process and the present investors, including the defendant numbers three to seven, along with defendant numbers eight and nine, are attempting to sell their investments in the defendant number one and exit the health insurer. The cause of action further arose on 21-12-2017 when newspaper articles of the Economic Times being in public knowledge suggested that the five companies have been shortlisted to purchase the defendant number one and that the floor price of Rs. 5,500 crore has been put for the sale by the defendant number one. The plaintiffs thus wanted a declaration to the effect that shares in the Indian company, which are held 
by defendant numbers 3 to 7 in fact belong to defendant number 2 company since defendant number 2 did not come forward to make the said claim derivative action was filed by the plaintiffs on its behalf to the aforesaid effect. As per the plaintiffs, the High Court of Madras at Chennai had the jurisdiction to entertain the same in as much as one registered office of the Indian company is in Chennai. Two, the investments made by defendant number two were made in the Indian company in Chennai. And three, substantial part of cause of action as reflected in the correspondence letters exchanged between plaintiff number two and defendant number one, numbers one and ten arose in Chennai. The contesting defendants questioned the territorial jurisdiction of the Madras High Court to entertain the said suit on the ground that no cause of action available to the plaintiffs to maintain the suit arose within the jurisdiction of the said court. In substance, the plaintiffs were attempting to resolve the dispute between the shareholders of the company, though all these shareholders are residents and nationals of Dubai. Moreover, they are claiming that though shares are in the names of defendants numbers 3 to 7, it is defendant number 2 which has the beneficial interest therein and even defendant number 2 is a foreign entity which is covered by the foreign law. Likewise, the inter se relationship between defendant number two and the plaintiffs is also covered by the foreign law. It was additionally contended that the claims made by the plaintiffs are not enforceable even under the Companies Act 1956 or the Companies Act 2013. As far as inter se disputes between the plaintiffs and the contesting defendants who are all shareholders of defendant number two are concerned they have a reason in Dubai, which is outside the territorial jurisdiction of Chennai. Messrs. C. A. Sundaram, Neeraj Kishan Kaul, and others, learned senior counsel, appeared for the plaintiffs. In substance, their argument was that the learned single judge of the Madras High Court had rightly allowed the application for leave to file the suit after satisfying that the court at Chennai had the territorial jurisdiction to entertain such a suit which was a derivative action taken out by the plaintiffs on behalf of defendant number two. It was highlighted that even if defendant number two was a Dubai company of which plaintiffs and defendant numbers three to seven 
were the shareholders dispute was in respect of shares in defendant number 1 which was an indian company having its registered office in chennai from the date of its incorporation stop